the little feather of fenice the bright falcon from russian fairy tales by peter polovoy translated by robert nisbet bain eighteen fifty four to nineteen o nine this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine the little feather of fenice the bright falcon once upon a time there was an old widower who lived with his three daughters the elder and the middle one were fond of show and finery but the youngest only troubled herself about household affairs although she was of a loveliness which no pen can describe and no tale can tell one day the old man got ready to go to market in the town and said now my dear daughters say what shall i buy for you at the fair the eldest daughter said buy me dear dad a new dress the middle daughter said buy me dear dad a silk kerchief but the youngest daughter said buy me dear dad a little scarlet flower the old man went to the fair he bought for his eldest daughter a new dress for his middle daughter a silk kerchief but though he searched the whole town through he could not find a little scarlet flower he was already on his way back when there met him a little old man whom he knew not and this little old man was carrying a little scarlet flower our old man was delighted and he asked the stranger sell me thy little scarlet flower thou dear little old man the old man answered him my little scarlet flower is not for sale tis mine by will it has no price and cannot be priced but i'll let thee have it as a gift if thou wilt marry thy youngest daughter to my son and who then is thy son dear old man my son is the good and valiant warrior youth fenice the bright falcon by day he dwells in the sky beneath the high clouds at night he descends to the earth as a lovely youth our old man fell a-thinking if he did not take the little scarlet flower he would grieve his daughter and if he did take it there was no knowing what sort of a match he would be making he thought and thought and at last he took the little scarlet flower for it occurred to him that if this fenice the bright falcon who was thus to be wedded to his daughter did not please him it would be possible to break the match off but no sooner had the strange old man given him the little scarlet flower then he vanished from before his eyes just as if he had never met him at all the old man scratched his head and began to ponder still more earnestly i don't like the look of it at all he said and when he got home he gave his elder daughters their things and his youngest daughter her little scarlet flower and said to her i don't like thy little scarlet flower a bit my daughter i don't like it at all wherefore so vexed at it dear father quoth she then he stooped down and whispered in her ear the little scarlet flower of thine is willed away it has no price and money could not buy it me i have married thee beforehand for it to the son of the strange old man whom i met in the way to fenice the bright falcon and he told her everything that the old man had told him of his son grieve not dear father said the daughter judge not of my intended by the sight of thine eyes for though he come a-flying we shall love him all the same and the lovely daughter shut herself up in her little gabled chamber put her little scarlet flower in water opened her window and looked forth into the blue distance scarcely had the sun settled down behind the forest when whence he came who knows fenice the bright falcon darted up in front of her little window he had feathers like flowers he lit upon the balustrade fluttered into the little window flopped down upon the floor and turned into a goodly young warrior the damsel was terrified she very nearly screamed but the good youth took her tenderly by the hand looked tenderly into her eyes and said fear me not my destined bride every evening until our marriage i will come flying to thee whenever thou placest in the window the little scarlet flower i'll appear before thee and here is a little feather out of my little wing and whatever thou mayest desire go but out on the balcony and wave this little feather and immediately it will appear before thee then fenis the bright falcon kissed his bride and fluttered out of the window again and he found great favour in her eyes and henceforth she placed a little scarlet flower in the window every evening and so it was that whenever she placed it there the goodly warrior youth fenice the bright falcon came down to her thus a whole week passed by and sunday came round the elder sisters decked themselves out to go to church and attired themselves in their new things and began to laugh at their younger sister what art thou going to wear said they thou hast no new things at all and she answered no i have nothing so i'll stay at home 
but she bided her time went out on the balcony waved her flowery feather in the right direction and whence i know not there appeared before her a crystal carriage and horses and servants in gold galoon and they brought for her a splendid dress embroidered with precious stones the lovely damsel sat in the carriage and went to church when she entered the church every one looked at her and marvelled at her beauty and her priceless splendour some tsarevna or other has come to our church depend upon it the good people whispered among themselves when the service was over our beauty got into her carriage and rolled home got into the balcony waved her flowery feather over her left shoulder and in an instant the carriage and the servants and the rich garments had disappeared the sisters came home and saw her sitting beneath the little window as before oh sister cried they thou hast no idea what a lovely lady was at mass this morning twas a thing marvellous to behold but not to be described by pen or told in tales two more weeks passed by and two more sundays and the lovely damsel threw dust in the eyes of the people as before and took in her sisters her father and all the other orthodox people but on the last occasion when she was taking off her finery she forgot to take out of her hair her diamond pin the elder sisters came from church and began to tell her about the lovely tsarevna and as their eyes fell upon her hair they cried with one voice ah little sister what is that thou hast got the lovely damsel cried also and ran off into her little room beneath the gables and from that time forth the sisters began to watch the damsel and to listen of a night at her little room and discovered and perceived how at dawn fenis the bright falcon fluttered out of her little window and disappeared behind the dark woods and the sisters thought evil of their younger sister and they strewed pieces of broken glass on to the window-sill of their sister's little dormer chamber and stuck sharp knives and needles there that fenis the bright falcon when he lit down upon the window might wound himself on the knives and at night fenis the bright falcon flew down and beat vainly with his wings and beat again but could not get through the little window but only wounded himself on the knives and cut and tore his wings and the bright falcon lamented and fluttered upward and cried to the fair damsel farewell lovely damsel farewell my betrothed thou shalt see me no more in thy little dormer chamber seek me in the land of thrice nine in the empire of thrice ten the way thither is far thou must wear out slippers of iron thou must break to pieces a staff of steel thou must fret away rains of stone before thou canst find me good maiden and at the selfsame hour a heavy sleep fell upon the damsel and through her sleep she heard these words yet could not awaken in the morning she awoke and lo knives and needles were planted on the window-sill and blood was trickling from them all pale and distraught she wrung her hands and cried lo my distresses have destroyed my darling beloved and the same hour she packed up and started from the house and went to seek her bright white love fenis the shining falcon the damsel went on and on through many gloomy forests she went through many dreary morasses she went through many barren wildernesses and at last she came to a certain wretched little hut she tapped at the window and cried host and hostess shelter me a poor damsel from the dark night an old woman came out upon the threshold we crave thy pardon lovely damsel whither art thou going lovey-dovey alas granny i seek my beloved fenis the bright falcon wilt thou not tell me where to find him nay i know not but pray go to my middle sister she will show thee the right way and lest thou should stray from the path take this little ball whithersoever it rolls thither will be thy way the lovely damsel passed the night with the old woman and on the morrow when she was departing the old woman gave her a little gift here said she is a silver spinning-board and a golden spindle thou wilt spin a spindle full of flax and draw out threads of gold the time will come when my gift will be of service to thee the damsel thanked her and followed the rolling ball whether twere a long time or a short matters not but the ball rolled all the way to another little hut the damsel knocked at the door and the second old woman opened it the old woman asked her questions and said to her thou hast still a long way to go damsel and it will be no light matter to find thy betrothed but look now when thou comest to my elder sister she will be able to tell thee better than i can but take this gift from me for thy journey a silver saucer and a golden apple the time will come when they will be of use to thee the damsel passed the night in the hut 
and then went on farther after the rolling ball she went through the woods farther and farther and at every step the woods grew blacker and denser and the tops of the trees reached to the very sky the ball rolled right up to the last hut an old woman came out upon the threshold and invited the lovely damsel to take shelter from the dark night the damsel told the old woman whither she was going and what she sought thine is a bad business my child said the old woman thy fenest the bright falcon is betrothed to the tsarevna over sea and will shortly be married to her when thou gettest out of the wood on to the shores of the blue sea sit on a little stone take out thy silver spinning-board and thy golden spindle and sit down and spin and the bride of fenis the bright falcon will come out to thee and will buy thy spindle from thee but thou must take no money for it only ask to see the flowery feathers of fenis the bright falcon the damsel went on farther and the road grew lighter and lighter and behold there was the blue sea free and boundless it lay before her and there far far away above the surface of the sea bright as a burning fire gleamed the golden summits of the marble palace halls surely that is the realm of my betrothed which is visible from afar thought the lovely damsel and she sat upon the little stone took out her silver spinning-board and her golden spindle and began spinning flax and drawing golden thread out of it and all at once she saw coming to her along the seashore a certain tsarevna with her nurses and her guards and her faithful servants and she came up to her and watched her working and began to bargain with her for her silver spinning-board and her golden spindle i will give them to thee for nothing tsarevna only let me look on fenis the bright falcon for a long time the tsarevna would not consent but at last she said very well come and look at him when he is lying down to rest after dinner and drive the flies away from him and she took from the damsel the silver spinning-board and the golden spindle and went to her terum made fenis the bright falcon drunk after dinner with a drink of magic venom and then admitted the damsel when an unwakable slumber had overpowered him the damsel sat beside his pillow and her tears flowed over him in streams awake arise fenis the bright falcon said she to her love i thy lovely damsel have come to thee from afar i have worn out slippers of iron i have ground down a staff of steel i have fretted away rains of stone everywhere and all times have i been seeking thee my love but fenis the bright falcon slept on nor knew nor felt that the lovely damsel was weeping and mourning over him then the tsarevna also came in and bade them lead out the lovely damsel and awoke fenis the bright falcon i have slept for so long said he to his bride and yet it seemed to me as if someone had been here and wept and lamented over me surely thou hast dreamt it in thy dream said the tsarevna i myself was sitting here all the time and suffered not the flies to light on thee the next day the damsel again sat by the sea and held in her hands the silver saucer and rolled the little golden apple about on it the tsarevna came out walking again went up to her looked on and said sell me thy toy my toy is not merchandise but an inheritance let me but look once more on fenis the bright falcon and thou shalt have it as a gift very well come again in the evening and drive the flies away from my bridegroom and again she gave fenis the bright falcon a drink of magic sleeping venom and admitted the lovely damsel to his pillow and the lovely damsel began to weep over her love and at last one of the burning tears fell from her eyes upon the cheeks then fenis the bright falcon awoke from his heavy slumbers and cried alas who was it who burned me oh darling of my desires said the lovely damsel i thy maiden have come to thee from afar i have worn out shoes of iron i have worn down staves of steel i have gnawed away wafers of stone and have sought thee everywhere my beloved this is the second day that i thy damsel have sorrowed over thee and thou wakest not from thy slumber nor made answer to my words then only did fenis the bright falcon know his beloved again and was so overjoyed that words cannot tell of it and the damsel told him all that had happened how her wicked sisters had envied her how she had wandered from land to land and how the tsarevna had bartered him for toys fenis fell in love with her more than ever kissed her on her sugary mouth and bade them set the bells a-ringing without delay and assemble the boyars and the princes and the men of every degree in the market-place and he began to ask them tell me good people and answer me according to good sense 
which bride ought i to take to wife and shorten the sorrow of life her who sold me or her who bought me back again and the people declared with one voice her who bought thee back again and fenice the bright falcon did so they crowned him at the altar the same day in wedlock with the lovely damsel the wedding was joyous and boisterous and magnificent i also was at this wedding and drank wine and mead and the bumpers overflowed and every one had his fill and the beard was wet when the mouth was dry end of the little feather of fenice the bright falcon recording by expatriate in bangor maine